Chapter 1 First Person Narrative Mike Simmons or Mika It was Saturday again. My special cleaning day. The day that I could clean the house dressed in my cleaner's outfit. All my life I have been an occasional but committed cross-dresser. I love my dresses and skirts but above all I love my humble cleaner's uniform and I already was dressed in it. Nothing fancy, just a plain housekeeping dress of the type that hotel maids have to wear, a working apron, pantyhose, and comfortable shoes. And of course, the appropriate underwear, matching panties and bra in my very realistic breast forms, the only expensive item of my cheap outfit. I fixed my thick longish hair into a more feminine manner, I put some lippy on, and I was ready. I had no illusions of course as I looked at myself in the mirror. I knew that I had an androgynous look and I couldn't easily pass in public as a female but that didn't stop me doing it. The inner satisfaction I felt, sexual and not only, was the strongest possible drive, a drive I couldn't resist though I have tried to stop it on numerous occasions over the years. The urge was far too strong. But this Saturday was going to be double special because my girlfriend was coming to visit me. She wanted to see Mika in action as she said. She had keys to the house so she said she would call sometime in the morning. She added that I could go on with my cleaning schedule and she would let herself in. I was full of anticipation as I had a quick breakfast and a cup of coffee before I carried upstairs the vacuum cleaner and my other utensils to start the cleaning. The house which was a gift from my rich parents was biggish, two bedrooms, two bathrooms in my study since I worked from home as a software specialist. As I started my cleaning, I couldn't stop thinking about the imminent visit of Linda, my girlfriend. We were together for more than six months now and she was fully aware of my cross-dressing tendencies. She had stayed in my house many times and she saw me in my nighty and various other girly outfits but she never saw me in action as a maid. This was going to be a novelty for both of us and my adrenaline was on red as I started vacuuming the bedrooms. Well, hello Mike or shall I say Mika, I heard a voice yelling at me behind my back. I stopped the vacuum and turned back to face Linda, a beaming smile on her face. I was blushing all over as I said hesitantly, Oh, hello Linda, I couldn't hear you coming in with all that vacuum cleaner's noise. She looked at me critically, her smiling eyes all sparkling from excitement, look at you, the picture of domesticity. I was watching you for a couple of minutes as you were vacuuming. You were so involved with the task as if it was the most important job. Now I understand what you were trying to tell me all those months, your commitment to cleaning and the love of being a maid. Still blushing and with a shy smile I asked, how do I look, am I convincing enough, am I looking silly? You certainly don't look silly to me, but you are still a boy in a dress and apron. Yes, you have softer features than the average male, a prominent bosom and great legs for display but you have a long way to go to look really womanly. She obviously saw the disappointment in my eyes because she hastily added, but of course we can correct all that fairly easily, complete makeovers are quite popular those days. I felt excitement and fear when I heard those words. Makeover was a long-standing dream of mine but I never dared to proceed that far. And now Linda was proposing it? You did touch a very sensitive chord of mine, Linda. Makeover has always been the ultimate dream for me. But would you go along with it? And what about our relationship? Would you be able to accept me as Mika on a more permanent base? I don't know what to think, I said, wiping my sweaty hands on my cotton apron. I must admit that I like that soft feminine side of yours, it somehow complements parts of my character, she replied and then added, and don't forget that so many months later and after you've confided to me your cross-dressing tendencies, I still am here with you, so yes, I can see a very convincing Mika emerging after a serious makeover. But before we go that far we must sort out other aspects of our relationship and what will be your new role after that. 
The feelings of excitement and fear for the unknown intensified as I said, shall I go down to the kitchen and make some fresh coffee so we can sit down and discuss all those issues you've just mentioned? You made me very intrigued now. Yes, let's just do that. Linda simply answered as she turned to go downstairs. I quickly followed, being very conscious of what I was wearing. Chapter 2 Six months later first-person narrative Linda Carraway As I was looking at Mika moving around the house, I couldn't believe how much she had changed during the past six months. She was looking so different, so womanly in her pretty house dress and piney, a perfect picture of a 50s housewife. Where on earth you managed to find those dresses that you love to wear around the house, Mika? They look so old-fashioned. I asked with genuine curiosity. On oh, Miss Linda, she answered a mischievous look on her face, I found a wonderful second-hand shop with very cheap vintage clothes. I became quite friendly with the shop's young owner, she even knows my TG identity. I was amazed how Nico was so open now about being a TG person. I was also secretly pleased that she insisted calling me most of the time Miss as if she was my employee, which somehow, she was in an unofficial way. You are such a crafty little thing, I replied with a small laugh and looking at my watch added, it's getting late, I have to run, lots of meetings are on my agenda today. Yes Miss, you better go. Any preference for dinner tonight? She asked innocently, her hands playing with her delicate organdy apron. Let me think. Fish would be nice. How about some nicely marinated fresh salmon and a green salad? Let's try and be good tonight, we both need to lose a couple of pounds. Your cooking has been very enticing the past few weeks. That's a great idea miss, I agree with you. I need to lose some weight, my waistline is not what it should be. And Mika, I added with a cunning smile, I would like you in a nice uniform tonight when I'll be back. How about a black or dove gray dress and a nice white apron? I want my pretty and efficient maid to welcome me tonight with a chilled white Sauvignon Blanc on a tray. I was amused when I saw her blushing. I could tell, she loved my suggestion. I know her too well by now, she would grab any opportunity to be in a uniform. Yes miss, I'd love that, have a nice day at work, she replied as she rushed towards me and gave me an unexpected tight hug saying, thank you for everything you have done for me Linda. I was touched by her spontaneity but I managed to keep my calm saying, that's alright dearest, what I've done for you I've done for myself as well. We're at the same boat for a long sail I hope. We certainly are miss and you are the very competent captain of that boat. You will make me late little minx, I better go or I'll be late for my first meeting. I said in an anxious voice as I opened the door and rushed to my car parked outside. As I was driving, I couldn't stop thinking of all those changes that had happened in our lives during the past six months. After a very successful makeover Miko was now permanently in female clothes and she was very happy about that. And I was always now thinking of Mika as a she. I haven't seen her once in trousers, even ladies' pants since her transformation started. She loved her vintage clothes and her uniforms and I was equally happy to be part of it. She gradually adopted the role of my housewife slash maid and I definitely encouraged it. It was a magic balance between us and somehow it was working. She was still working from home as a software consultant but I had noticed that she was gradually distancing herself from that field as if she was losing interest. When I confronted her, she truthfully answered that since her transformation she was not that keen to continue working in that field and she was discouraging potential clients. She then had added in a burst of honesty that it was a matter of time before she was going to stop working in that field altogether. That had worried me a bit and not because of a loss of income because Mika was independently well off through her parents. I was worried that she might be very soon bored staying at home all day. 
There is so much you can do in a house as a maid and her housewife. And then I had this idea that could solve the problem. I asked around at my work, it was a big firm with tens of people working in it, if they were in need for a very good and committed cleaner who desperately needed work and who happened to be a transitioning TG. In other words, I was offering Mika as a maid slash cleaner and I was the one giving the proper reference since I mentioned that she was already cleaning for me twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays. I got an enthusiastic response from several people and I selected three ladies who were living alone and were not the ones I would socialize with. So, I offered Mika's services for three days a week, Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday with the going per hour minimum fee. I then added that Mika was used to wear a simple maid's uniform when at work and that impressed them even more. All that happened behind Mika's back and I barely could suppress a smile when I thought that tonight, after dinner, I was going to announce it to her as a fait accompli. I was dying to see her reaction though I was strongly believing that she would accept it eagerly. It had been another one of her many fantasies as she had confessed to me after one of those long love sessions we often had. I let a sigh of contentment as I was entering my work's garage looking for my allocated parking space. Life was good having Mika at my beck and call and it was even better because our sexual life, very unconventional at times, was extremely satisfactory. Chapter 3 The Same Evening First Person Narrative Mika I checked once more my looks in the mirror. I thought I looked very smart in my black dress, half-white apron, black tights and black two-inches court shoes, I kept my long hair thanks to the hair extensions during my makeover back in a high ponytail and I added a white hairband. I certainly looked the part, a pretty and efficient maid, as Linda mentioned to me this morning. I wasn't so certain about the pretty but I did look efficient. I was unusually nervous waiting for Linda to be back from work. She had seen me many times before in a maid's uniform and all sorts of female outfits but tonight for some reason I felt that it was going to be a special night, I had that feeling when she was departing for work this morning, somehow I sensed it as I was hugging her, a particular look in her eyes. Call it a feminine intuition, if I was able to have developed such a thing. I heard her car in the parking lot in front of the house and I ran to the fridge to take out the wine. I filled a glass with the chilled and very pale Sauvignon Blanc put it on a tray and moved by the door, my heart pounding. She came in flustered, a sign that she had a difficult day at work, but the moment she saw me waiting with the tray, she smiled, that's my girl, that's what I was dreaming all day long, thank you Mika, you are a jewel. My pleasure miss, I answered with a blushing smile and a slight curtsy, something that I've never done before, it was spontaneous. I like that Mika, please keep doing it, it does emphasize your current station. She looked at me more carefully as she had her first sip of wine, and you do look efficient and very real. That black dress looks good on you and its length is correct, just below your knee. And the apron accentuates your waist. Have you lost some weight? More blushing as I answered, I wish I were miss, but no. It's just my waist cincher belt. Good for you. I wouldn't be able to wear one of those, too restrictive for me. You are right miss, I never wear one when I'm doing my chores, but I love to have a narrow waist and as a TG person I know my limitations, so the belt helps towards the illusion for a more feminine look. Aren't we chatty tonight, she said and after another sip of vino added, I better go and change but I'm famished, you can serve in five minutes. And please join me, we have to chat. Chapter 4 The same evening first person narrative Linda as I was changing to my comfy house clothes, I was thinking that Mika suspects of something and she expects something. I saw her worried eyes when I said to her, we have to chat. But I'll tell her tonight after dinner. If her drive to be a cleaner and a maid is as strong as I suspect she will accept my proposal even if she pretends that she maintains some reservations. The meal was sumptuous, Mika was fast becoming a very competent cook. The bottle of wine we shared made us more relaxed and slightly tipsy. 
After she cleared the table, I asked her to open a second bottle of wine. We both looked a bit tipsy so the conversation that followed was more relaxed and with a few giggles. Have you nearly packed up your old business, Mika? I asked innocently yes, Miss Linda, I only have a client now and I'll finish his project by the end of the week. After that I want and need a break from the software world, it's too stressy and competitive for me. I'm glad to hear that Mika because I found some work for you to get you out of the house, work as a cleaner. The mixture of fear and excitement in her eyes was precious. I was enjoying that and the wine was intensifying that enjoyment. Wow, that sounds scary. What time of cleaning, where? Mika replied full of anxiety. Well, it's not scary at all and simpler than you think, I continued with a smile and a reassuring voice. I asked around at work and three ladies are in desperate need for a good daily cleaner so I offered your services. I thought Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday would be good days. That leaves Monday and Thursday to catch up with the housework in this house and of course the weekend will be more relaxing and we can be together. What do you think? The excitement was prevailing in Mika's face now as she replied, That's a huge step for me miss, facing the world out there as Mika. Have you mentioned anything to those ladies about my special TG condition? Of course I did, you couldn't fool them however well you can portray a female. Women are far better than men to read TG people like you. But that was beneficial in a way because they all said to me that TG people tend to be far better maids and cleaners because usually it is their choice to do so and not a necessity. And they were spot on in your case. You are a committed maid and cleaner on your own will, nobody forces you to do that. Am I right Mika dearest? She was blushing now as she said, Yes Miss Linda you are right. Nobody is forcing me but can you tell me a bit more what this is about? Well, as I told you already three ladies want to employ you. They are all single and they need you once a week. I'll tell you details and other practical issues tomorrow. I already mentioned to them that you were used to wear a simple uniform when working and they were impressed. I'm the one who vouches for you. I told them that I use you as my cleaner twice a week and I am very pleased with your work. So please make an effort not to disappoint them because that will reflect badly on me. Wow again! You act as my employer. Do those ladies know about our relationship, that we live together etc? And of course, I'm intrigued about the uniform. Do they provide one or I'll have to take one of mine? Yes, I had to act as your employer, that was the only way to sell your services. And don't worry I don't socialize with those ladies, they are in other departments and they have no idea about my personal life. So, you shouldn't worry about that. As for the uniform, I have no idea if they will provide one so when you go to start working pack a plain uniform and matching apron and as soon as you arrive go and change to your work clothes. I forgot to add that you are going to be paid the minimum wages per hour for a domestic worker. All is going to be informal and under the table. At the end of your working day you will collect your wages in cash. As I was talking, I was watching Mika. Her mind was racing fast in order to absorb all those eminent changes in her life. Up to now she was acting in the privacy of our home, playing dressing up games and acting as the housewife slash maid at the same time. All of it was partly erotic partly real with my encouragement and participation. Now she was going to go out to the real world being a real cleaner for people who expected her to act as one. This is for real! Mika exclaimed as if she had read my mind. I can confess to you Linda, though I suspect that you already know it, that this is one of my more advanced fantasies. I always was wondering what it would be like to be a lowly female cleaner and make a living cleaning other people's houses. Now I have the chance to find out firsthand. 
Indeed you have, I replied and continued, and I simply hope that you will be able to cope as a lowly female cleaner, as you just called yourself, out there in the real world. Because once you start you must stay committed for the foreseeable future. Otherwise you will discredit me as your sponsor, as the one who is producing for you the reference letter. Because I forgot to mention to you that the first time you appear for work you will carry a true reference letter from me that you will hand to each of those ladies. That will be your ticket to enter their home, that will be a proof of your identity and that they can trust you to stay behind and clean for them as they will be at work. I vouch for you that you are competent in what you do and trustworthy to stay alone in the house. I saw a concern in her eyes this time. She realized that she had to commit herself in a serious manner and this wasn't going to be a game. And then something unexpected happened, she stood up, adjusted her apron and with an embarrassed smile and a slight curtsy said, I solemnly declare to you Miss Linda, being my prime employer, that I'll not let you down and I'll try my best to act as a competent cleaner and maid to those ladies. I couldn't hide my astonishment as I said, thank you for that demonstration of loyalty Mika, I believe you and I trust you, and I loved your curtsy, I might get used to that. Then trying to unwind the moment's tension I added, now you can go and do the dishes. I'm going up to my bedroom, I have some work to do and catch up with my emails. Later when you are ready for bed please join me to the bedroom, I want my Mika tonight to sleep with me. Yes miss, I like that miss, I mean your invitation, she answered gingerly as she started collecting the wine glasses from the table. Chapter 5 Tuesday morning a few days later first person narrative Mika it was 8.15 a.m. and I was standing in front of a very luxurious looking block of flats, situated at a very posh part of town. I looked at the names by the entrance and found the name of my new employer, F5-7, Jennifer Blackman. Then I looked around and saw another less impressive entrance a few meters away where a notice in bold letters was announcing, Traders and Domestic Staff Entrance. The bells in this entrance had only the flat's number. I already had my instructions, I had to ring the bell and go through the entrance at 8.30 sharp. I felt a surge of excitement and fear combined. I was domestic staff now or help as some employers love to call their servants. My social status shifted dramatically downwards. I looked at my reflection in the glass door. I was dressed modestly, denim skirt down to my knees, plain blouse, thick tights and low heel workable shoes. My hair was kept behind in a high ponytail and my makeup was very discreet. My only accessory was my tiny gold studs on my pierced ears, that was a recent present from Miss Linda who handed me in an envelope my reference letter addressed to Miss Jennifer Blackman and inspected me this morning before my departure. In a largest shoulder bag, I was carrying my work clothes, a plain uniform dress and matching apron. I looked at my wristwatch again, 8.25, another five minutes before ringing the bell. I made a few paces up and down the front of the building trying to calm myself down. Everything was going to be a novelty from now on. At 8.30 sharp I rung the bell. A crisp female voice answered immediately, come up using the service elevator 5th floor, flat 7. I heard the buzz and entered a largish corridor painted in industrial gray. Nothing fancy, T that entrance. I took the elevator to the 5th floor. The cabin was painted the same gray color and the lack of mirrors was noticeable. Another corridor in front of me and a series of dark gray doors, clearly the back doors of the flats. I saw F7 and I knocked hesitantly at the door since I couldn't see a bell. The door opened instantly and a tall blonde lady in her mid to late thirties asked me to come in. I entered into a very spacious kitchen as she said with a smile, using the same crisp voice, you must be Mika, welcome. Good morning miss. Yes, I'm Mika and I bring this letter from my employer Miss Linda Carraway. Yes, thank you I've been expecting that, she replied as she took the letter, scrutinizing me with her cold light blue eyes. 
I could instantly tell that this lady was going to keep formalities with me. She opened the letter and read it quickly. Right, everything seems to be in order, your prime employer recommends you very warmly. She says that you are a very diligent worker and you pay attention to details, something that is essential for a cleaner. Thank you, miss. I'll try my best, Mississippi. I replied with a cautious smile. You can call me Miss Jennifer or Miss Blackman if you prefer. Did you bring some working clothes with you? I understand that you prefer to work in a uniform which is fine by me, in fact I prefer it because that clearly defines your status. Yes, Miss Jennifer I brought my working clothes, where could I change? Yes, of course, let me show you. There is a large laundry room next to the kitchen where you can change. It's the door at the other end of the kitchen. You will also find there a small WC for your own use. And my previous cleaner who had to go back to her country for family reasons had left behind a couple of her old uniforms. You are free to use them if you want, as far as I remember she washed them before her departure, they probably are in a drawer by the washing machine. Judging from your size I think they will fit you. Was that an indirect suggestion to wear one of those uniforms used by her previous cleaner? I felt a surge of excitement hearing that. A uniform dress used extensively before by another maid was quite excitable for me. Thank you Miss Jennifer, I'll go and change and I'll check the old uniforms. Be back in a few minutes. Okay then, I'll give you the guided tour when you are dressed and show you where everything is and emphasize where you should be extra careful. Call me when you are back in the kitchen. Yes, Miss Jennifer, I replied as I moved towards the door at the other side of the kitchen where the laundry room was. I instantly checked the drawer with the old uniforms. They were two there, a black dress and a dove gray dress, a bit more formal, more real made and less cleaner outfit. I quickly tried the gray one and it fitted well. I decided to go for it and might give a good impression to Miss Jennifer. I added a large cotton bib apron with a discreet frill all around and a white band on my hair. I put my comfortable flat shoes on and went back to the kitchen. I was full of contradicting emotions as I was standing in the middle of the kitchen. I had the feeling that I was transported to a parallel universe. I was dressed in clothes not belonging to me. I was in a totally new and alien environment and I had to face an employer who had no idea who I really was. In her eyes, I was just another cleaner and maid. As I was about to call her, she came back to the kitchen. She looked at me from top to bottom with an appraising look. Rose's uniform fits you well. You look the part now. Can I ask you a favor? Of course, miss. I replied wondering what sort of favor she would want from me. I know your name is Mika, but could I call you Rosa when you work for me? Rosa has been my cleaner for many years and before that she was working as a live-in maid for my parents so I grew up with her and I have a soft spot for that name. I looked astounded at her. I just have lost my name as well. I really and truly was in a parallel universe. Of course, miss, you can call me whatever you like, Rosa is a good name. I answered gingerly with a small curtsy. Somehow the loss of my identity freed some of my inhibitions. She smiled broadly and for the first time her eyes had lost their coldness as she said, I think we'll get on well Rosa, I liked your small curtsy just now, you seem to have the right approach. So, let me take you around the flat and show you where everything is and what I expect from you. Half an hour later she had gone. She had to go to work and she would be back at 5.00 to check on my performance and pay me. I was very self-conscious when I started working. Everything felt surreal to me. I wasn't cleaning my own home, I was a daily domestic called Rosa and I was cleaning another person's mess. She certainly wasn't such a tidy person. 
clothes were thrown everywhere and the bathroom was messy. I started with the tidying up and I had to improvise about certain things. Then continued with changing the sheets in the main bedroom, dusting, vacuuming. I was about to attack the master bathroom when my mobile rang. It was Linda! Hello Miss Linda, I said in my soft feminine voice I tried to establish. Hi Mika, how are you doing? I have been thinking of you all morning but only now I have the chance to contact you. How is your new employer? She is a bit eccentric. She changed my name to Rosa because her old maid had that name, then suggested that I could wear the uniform that Rosa left behind. So, I'm dressed in a more formal gray dress and white large apron. I feel that I'm another person in another world. Wow. I bet you enjoy that Rosa. That's a great name for a maid and if I remember well from my readings the old Victorians love to choose names for their domestic staff. How about the work? Can you cope? I'm struggling a bit until I find my bearings. Next time it will be much better. And between you and me I feel that I'm in a parallel world. Everything is a complete novelty. I'm certain you enjoy it dearest Mika or Rosa, your dream finally becomes a reality. I have to run now for my next meeting. You will tell me all about it tonight. What time you expect to be back home? Miss Blackman will be back at around 5.00, she will inspect my work and pay me, so I expect to be back at home around 6.00. Good. I'll see you then around 7.00, I'll stay a bit longer to catch up with my work. And prepare something simple for us to eat. You will be exhausted after a hard day's work. Bye for now. Bye miss, I replied and put my mobile back to my apron pocket. It was past 5.00 and I was still ironing sheets in the laundry room when Miss Jennifer came back. I heard the front door and then I heard her walking around the flat obviously inspecting everything. Finally, she opened the laundry room door a smile on her face. Hi Rosa. At first glance it seems that you did a fine work, the flat looks great and it smells so fresh. Thank you. Are you finishing soon with your ironing? Yes Miss Jennifer, I've just finished. I'll change to my street clothes and be with you in a few minutes. Within the next ten minutes I was out through the back door I expected of the help. I received my payment in an envelope, my first wages as a domestic. Miss Jennifer thanked me and said she was looking forward to see me again in a week's time. And next time I could use the spare roses uniform, the black one and wash the one I was wearing today. Gosh, what a day! Chapter 6 Wednesday Morning First Person Narrative Mika It was a deja vu scene. I was in front of the address given to me at 8.30, like yesterday. I was wearing the same denim skirt but a different blouse. Miss Linda insisted on a simple outfit, nothing fancy for someone who was going to work as a cleaner. This time it was a single two-levels modest house in a low-middle-class part of town. The name I had this time was Tanya Gonzalez. I took a deep breath and rang the bell. It took a minute or two until a lady, the exact opposite of Jennifer Blackman, opened the door. She was short, dark and slightly stout but very friendly and welcoming. Well hello honey, come in, you must be Nika. Good morning, miss. Yes, I'm Mika, thank you, I said as I entered the house. Please call me Tanya, we don't want any formalities. Do you have the recommendation letter from Linda, just to be certain who you appear to be? One witnesses all sorts of funny things those days. Yes, of course, miss. I mean Tanya, I replied as I opened my bag and gave her the letter. She opened the envelope and read it quickly. She turned to me the friendly smile still there. Good. I can see Linda is very supportive of you. 
I was about to ask where could I change when I heard a strong meowing and a large white car appeared. Oh, hello Snow White. This is Mika our cleaner. She is going to clean your fur from all over the house today. She looked at me apologetically. I'm afraid Mika this is going to be your hardest task today, this cat tends to abandon her fur all over the house. So, a very good and thorough vacuuming is needed. I can see that, I said smiling as I started looking around, seeing visible white fur remains. But I'll try. Could I go and change somewhere to my working clothes? Of course, now I remember Linda mentioning that you prefer to wear a uniform when cleaning. Just over there is the broom cupboard under the stairs, there are some hooks where you can hang your clothes. I'll go to the kitchen to make some coffee, come and meet me there when ready. Yes, Miss Tanya, I replied forgetting again to call her simply Tanya. She looked at me amused saying again, just Tanya please, as she moved towards the kitchen. I joined her a few minutes later wearing my simple light blue front button maid's dress and a white bib cotton apron. How you take your coffee, Mika? She asked casually. Just cream please, no sugar, thank you Tanya I answered with a small smile. Within a few minutes this woman made me feel very relaxed and comfortable. As we were drinking our coffee sitting around a large kitchen table she said as casually as ever, Can I ask you a personal question Mika? Yes of course. Linda told me that you are a TG person transitioning. I admire you for that. It takes courage to do it and I have first-hand experience because a cousin of mine did it a couple of years ago. She is a proud woman now. Are you thinking of going all the way? That was a very awkward question to answer because deep down I knew that I wasn't a full-blown TG, I simply was a cross-dresser exploring other sides of my personality. I was blushing all over when I hesitantly answered, I still am at an early stage and I'm not certain how far I want to go. At the moment I explore my feminine side in various aspects. One of them is to expose myself to other people doing a menial job, I somehow get an inner satisfaction by doing that. Tanya looked at me sympathetically. Sorry Mika if I put you on the spot. I'm simply a curious person by nature and I often tend to ask awkward questions. And thank you for answering so truthfully. I admire and respect your honesty in telling me that you get an inner satisfaction by doing menial tasks. That answers my other question I was about to ask you, why a seemingly educated person like you enjoys cleaning other people's houses, dressed as a maid? Another blushing without an answer this time. She saw my embarrassment and hastily added, enough of this chit-chat on inner feelings etc. After all you are here to do some cleaning and I expect you to do it properly. Come on then, let me show you around the house and explain what I want. Then I'll rush to work, I'm already late as it is. Yes Tanya, I am ready for that. I replied, feeling relieved that this difficult conversation ended and Tanya became my employer again. The hardest part in cleaning Tanya's house was the cat's fur that was everywhere. Snow White had access to everything including Tanya's bed which was covered with her white fur. It took me forever with the vacuum to bring the house in an acceptable level of cleanliness. She came back at about 5.00 o'clock and after looking around she was ecstatic. Thank you Mika, you did a great job, I haven't seen this house without visible Snow White's fur for God knows how long. Good girl! And without any warning she approached me and gave me a hug adding, I still don't understand why you want to be a cleaning lady but I can tell you that you are a good one, probably the best I had for some time. And I can assure you that I tend to change my cleaning ladies often and the reason is that they can't cope with the cat's fur. You are my champion cleaning lady. I was called a good girl and a cleaning lady. I liked that. Blushing all over I said, thank you Tanya, 
I'm glad you approve of my work, it means a lot to me. I want my employers to be satisfied. That makes me happy as well. My inner need to please as I was telling you. She handed me an envelope, heavier than expected. Here, this is your wages and a set of keys. I think that I can trust you with the keys. Next time you come, come at 9.00 and you will find a note from me with instructions what to do and your wages. That way I don't have to wait for you in the morning and you for me in the afternoon. I can always call you in your mobile if I need something extra and or you can call me in mine for extra instructions if needed. I was touched by her trusting nature. Thank you, Tanya. I appreciate your trust. It means a lot to me. I better go and change now. We said our goodbyes and I was on my way. Another day, another employer, another experience totally different from yesterday. I am now formally baptized as a cleaning lady. Chapter 7 The Same Evening First Person Narrative Linda I haven't really talked to Mika for two days now. Last night I came back from work late, we had a light meal and we both had an early night. She was exhausted from her first day of strenuous work as a cleaner and I had too much in my mind concerning my work. But tonight, I was looking forward to a chat. I talked to her on the phone earlier and she said that her second employer, Tanya Gonzalez was totally different from the first one Jennifer Blackman. I could have told her that, because when I met those ladies, I could tell they were coming from different backgrounds. But I wanted to hear what she had to tell me. Two continuous days working as a cleaning lady outside her comfort zone. I parked the car, grabbed my bag, and let myself in. And there, behind the door my sweet Mika was waiting with a glass of wine on a tray and a sweet smile on her face. Not in a uniform but in one of her vintage house dresses and as always, a pretty apron. The picture of a fifties housewife. Mika darling, how kind of you. I really need that. I said as I picked the glass and gave her a small sisterly kiss. You look fresh and lovely in that dress. Thank you, Linda. I love it so much when I wait for your arrival. I feel so much like your dutiful wife then. And you are my dutiful darling wife. And not only, because lately you develop other talents and I heard today from Tanya that you impressed her very much. She wants you now as her cleaning lady on a regular basis. Did she say that to you? Because she called me that, her cleaning lady and I loved it. I think it sounds much better than simply cleaner. Cleaner could be anybody, male or female, but cleaning lady clearly defines you. This is your vocation, isn't it? She looked flustered and I loved that. She replied timidly, I can't lie to you, I guess you can call it my vocation, I can't find any other word for it. Look at us, we started chatting away and we still stand by the door. Let me go change to my comfy clothes and then we can eat and chat more. I said as I put my glass back to Mika's tray after a generous sip of course. The table was perfectly set and we sat down to a simple but tasty meal. I was aware of course that Mika wouldn't be able to provide gourmet meals the days she was working out. So, I'm all ears. Talk to me. Tell me about your experiences and emotions the past two days. I said to Mika after she cleared the table and sat down again with a fresh glass of wine. She looked girlish to me, there was a softness on her face and she developed recently a tendency to blush easily. Well, my first employer, Miss Blackman, was formal and slightly forbidding. I felt intimidated from the very beginning having to go up through the domestic staff entrance. That made me feel like... A lowly domestic? Linda interrupted. Have you felt a surge of pleasure then? 
I know I was acting like a shrink, but I wanted to push Mika to let out her inner feelings. Blush, blush as Mika replied, yes miss, I felt a peculiar feeling of pleasure mixed with anxiety. I thought that much. Your submissive genes started to kick on. I said somehow ruthlessly. And then what? More blushing as Mika continued, then I had to change into a uniform dress and apron that belonged to her previous maid Rosa and from that moment on I became Rosa for her. And then I felt as if I had been stripped from any remains of my previous identity and I had really and truly become Rosa a cleaning lady working for a new employer. Have you felt any strong emotions then? I felt that I had to work hard because I didn't want to disappoint my mistress, I felt that I had a task to accomplish and that gave me an unusual feeling of inner satisfaction. I wouldn't call it sexual, it was more intellectually emotional, if that makes sense. It does make sense. I liked the word mistress you used, this is a step further from employer. This is an indication that being a lowly domestic is fast becoming a way of life for you my darling Mika. I saw a mixture of confusion and excitement in her eyes. I was touching more and more her sensitive cords. I guess it is, she replied hesitantly. But are you happy with this? I wouldn't like to create any problems on our special relationship. I value that much more than being a cleaning lady for unknown employers. She added with conviction. I'm happy as I watch you unveil all your suppressed feelings. I want them out and I'm standing by you. I said truthfully and then on an impulse added, but I am really and truly your prime employer, your real mistress, you should never forget that you are mine and mine only and I am the one who allows you to go out and work for other employers. Her expression was unique, a mixture of surprise and excitement from what she just heard from me because for the first time I was more assertive even aggressive in expressing my feelings. For the first time since she started her transition, if I can call that her strong tendency to endorse that new female role and status, I let my feelings out. Wow, that was impressive Miss Linda, she whispered back to me her eyes still shiny from excitement. She took my hand and squeezed it looking at me, then bashfully lowering her eyes simply added, Yes, you are my mistress, and yes again, I belong to you. Something so strongly soft and feminine was coming out of her as she pronounced those words. Something that increased my feelings of ownership. It was so inconceivable, even for me that I knew to believe that this soft feminine creature sitting next to me and looking at me with utter devotion was deep down still a male. There was tension on the air and I thought it was time to move our chat to lighter issues. I think you will find interesting and unusual the lady you are going to work on Thursday. I made a small research on her. I had a quick look on her file at work. Being at HR department can be sometimes useful. Her pensive sad eyes sparkled with a renewed interest. Really, miss? Please do tell me what you found out. She eagerly said well, she is a German lady older than the two you already worked for, she is in her mid-fifties. Her name is Erika Klomp. She is married with two grown-up children but she is alone in this country. Her family is back in Germany. She is somehow the liaison officer of our company with Germany. Should I expect something different from her if you can tell me something? She asked with genuine interest now. Well, you will be amused to know that she lives in a flat at the same posh building like Miss Blackman. So, you are going back there on Thursday. You will be in familiar ground. You know your way in through the domestic staff entrance, I said with a wink. Wow, that's amazing, what a coincidence. It's not exactly a coincidence. Our company has the use of five flats there for some of our employees under special conditions. Both Miss Blackman and Ms. Klomp are entitled to the use of a flat there. 
I said and added, but to answer your question about what is different about Ms. Klomp, I can only tell you that she is very Germanic, if you know what I mean, very precise and to the point, but with no particular sense of humor. I expect her to be strict, but fair with you. I saw Mika's eyes spark even more. I could sense what she was thinking, a strict employer can be a challenge for a cleaner. Would I be able to cope with that? And then she spoke and said the exact same thing, could I cope miss with her demands? I'm not a trained and experienced cleaner after all. Of course you can, you are not asked to pilot a plane after all. You simply need your common sense and a good eye for dirt and I think you have them both. Then I felt like teasing her a bit. But to add something funny we call her Nazi Erica behind her back because of her lack of humor and strictness, so beware of her. I hope I don't end up in a concentration camp if I fail her, she said jokingly but I could tell that I managed to stir her imagination. Chapter 8 Thursday Morning First Person Narrative Mika The scene was a repetition of the other day. It was 8.30 and I was standing in front of the service entrance of the posh building that was familiar to me by now. I found the name and rang the bell. The flat was at the seventh floor this time, F7-9 was marked by the bell. A guttural voice answered, Yeah. It's Mika the cleaner, I answered in my softer feminine voice. Come up, seventh floor, flat nine. The same voice said as I pushed the door that was buzzing. Same gray corridors and elevator. The back door at flat 9 was already half opened so I knocked and went in. A tall Amazon-looking woman with cropped blonde hair wearing a dark blue outfit consisting of dark blue pants and blouse and a single pearl necklace as the only adornment was standing in the middle of a kitchen similar to the one I saw the other day at Miss Blackman's flat. Good morning, Mrs. Klomp. I'm Mika the cleaning lady and here is my recommendation letter. I said as I handed the letter from Linda. She took the letter as she scrutinized me from top to bottom. Good morning, Mika. Thank you for the letter and I know Miss Carraway well enough to trust her judgment. You can call me Frau Klomp or Madam if you prefer. Do you have your working clothes with you? You can go and change at the laundry room, it is the door at the other end of the kitchen. Yes, thank you madam, I brought my uniform with me and I'm familiar with the layout, I worked to a similar flat the other day, Miss Blackman if you know her. Yes, I know of her, I never met her personally but go and change and then we can talk. Yes madam, I replied and moved towards the laundry room thinking all along that Linda was right. This woman was quite forbidding. I came back in a few minutes dressed in my usual light blue dress, full white apron, flat shoes and white hairband, ready to start. She looked at me more carefully this time. I detected in her eyes a look of amusement with some contempt. Mika it is isn't it? She said as if she had forgotten my name. Well, you look very efficient Mika the picture of a true dianced match in dot. Excuse me, madam? I asked puzzled it means servant girl in German. She said casually and then continued, but we both know that in reality you are a boy underneath, a boy who enjoys being a servant girl. We have quite a few like you in Germany and they make great maids and servants. That's why I was keen of having you when Miss Linda mentioned that you are a TG transitioning. I bet you simply are just a, what you call it in this country. Ah yes, a sissy boy or sissy maid. I was blushing all over as I was standing awkwardly in front of her. Nobody ever called me that. A sissy? Even Linda never mentioned that word to me. I wasn't certain how to react on that. Get angry or indignant. She saw my obvious embarrassment because she smiled for the first time, a rather cold smile I must say and added, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you, I simply said what I believe, that you must be very good at housework. Shall we start? 
I can tell you what I want you to do and show you where everything is. Yes, madam, I said eagerly. Please tell me what you want me to do. Frau Klomp didn't go to work, she stayed behind to supervise me. And she certainly did. She was very particular and she asked me on several occasions to do things her way. It was frustrating for me but I also learned a few new tricks about housework and cleaning. At about five o'clock I changed and I was ready to leave. Frau Klomp gave me an envelope with my wages. Thank you Mika, you did an excellent job and you were very patient with my remarks and suggestions. I'll see you next Thursday. I added some extra money in this envelope so you can go and buy a new uniform dress to use it when you work in my flat. I want it black and preferably cotton or poly cotton with the usual white piping, nothing fancy just a plain one and the hem below the knee please. That took me by surprise. Thank you Frau Klomp, that's very kind of you, I said with gratitude. Don't mention it Mika. You have the makings of a good dianst madchen and you deserve the proper reward for that. And in my country servant girls are asked to wear the traditional black dress and a feminine and functional white apron. I heard those last words with an inner feeling of satisfaction. My new cleaning lady maid career was progressing and my three new employers seemed to be pleased with my performance, each one of them in their particular way. Chapter 9 Friday Night First Person Narrative Linda you haven't told me yet how you coped with Nazi Erica the other day? I whispered to Mika as we were in bed hugging, me in my dark blue silk pajamas, her in a long white nighty. She is a very forbidding lady indeed, she whispered back trying to bring back memories of last Thursday. You know, to start with she called me a Dienstmachen or something similar meaning servant girl in German and then she called me a sissy boy or sissy maid. I was quite embarrassed and I wasn't sure how to answer. I couldn't hold my laughing. Wow, she is not exactly politically correct our Erica. But on the other hand, probably she is right. Aren't you a boy in skirts? That somehow makes you a sissy for some. But not for me. I don't really like this word, it is a bit demeaning and there is nothing demeaning in my Mika. You simply follow your vocation. I could tell, she liked what she just heard. She smiled happily and hugged me even stronger. She was quite particular how she wanted things done and she was on top of me all the time. A bit annoying actually, I couldn't work the way I'm used to. You better get used to that Mika dear, you are a cleaning lady and at the bottom of the packing order, you have to be prepared to cope with the particularities and eccentricities of your employer. Your mantra should always be yes sir, or yes madam dot. I felt her stiffening from excitement, I was stirring her submissive genes again. I guess you were right miss, she replied going back to the miss mode again. And she gave me some extra money, quite a generous sum indeed, so I can buy a new uniform to wear when I clean her place. She insisted that I buy a black maid's dress, nothing fancy and with the hem below the knee. She continued in a more excited voice. I bet you love that my pet, I said jokingly. And the black dress too. She means business this lady. She said that the black dress is the standard outfit for a servant girl in Germany. With the addition of course of a proper and full white apron. There you are Mika dear, Miss Erica read you like an open book. You are completely in your element here. I guess I am, she answered cautiously but I could tell that her excitement was mounting all the time. She loved that servant girl status. Tomorrow we go shopping. We can go together to your favorite uniform shop so you can choose your black dress, only this one will not be any LBD but the one with white collar and piping. I said teasingly feeling her excitement getting stronger by the minute. And interestingly enough mine was too. 
I could feel a surge between my thighs. The whole conversation had an erotic effect on both of us. Yes, I'd love that, she whispered and gave me another hug. Okay, my little sissy boy, I think I like calling you that on our intimate moments, I continued my teasing. Yes, madam, she replied coyly, because if I'm your sissy boy you certainly are my madam. Yes, I like that, I am your madam and this is how you're going to address me from now on my sissy Mika. You can drop that silly miss dot. I whispered in a husky voice as I felt a thrill of excitement running up my spine. That last phrase acted like the signal that sent us to another session of intense lovemaking.